Thank very you much. very much for the opportunity to uh, speak. My disclosures. So we all know that the uh, early survival advantage with EVAR uh, is lost. And we all know that uh, patients with aortic aneurysms uh, have uh, a fair bit of cardiovascular comorbidity that uh, is potentially responsible for uh, late mortality difference compared to matched controls. Uh, but there may be more to it than that. We know from the St. George's group that uh, patients with aortic aneurysms have a five-year survival of 67% uh, compared to 81% in matched controls. Uh, and part of that is related to these cardiovascular events. The freedom from cardiovascular events was 86% with aneurysms versus 93% for matched controls. And there are a multitude of factors that af affect uh, survival in, in patients with aortic aneurysms, but some of them are, are shown here. Uh, diameter uh, definitely is associated with survival. Larger aneurysm uh, patients don't do as well. Uh, we've shown that patients on statins postoperatively do better than those who are not on statins, uh, as has the group from uh, St. George's as well, and they showed that patients uh, not on antiplatelet agents don't do as well uh, with aortic aneurysms. Again, no survival advantage with uh, EVAR over open repair. The curves come together at least to eight years. Uh, we've seen them start to spread now in the EVAR-1 and, and the DREAM trials later on. We'll update that uh, with the Medicare database as well to see if that's the same uh, in the U.S. Uh, Medicare population. Uh, but importantly, 50% of patients were alive in all of these uh, studies uh, at eight years and at risk for ongoing events whether they be uh, rupture uh, or other cardiovascular events. So looking at the different mechanisms uh, for dealing uh, with aneurysms, with EVAR, we have our uh, standard typical uh, bifurcated graft. And then there is a process of, uh, of thrombosis that occurs. And it may be uh, sequential over time. And there may be uh, some flow through an endoleak but you have a sack full of thrombus, maybe with some, uh, some blood flow. We've shown at first in a, a small subgroup of the VQI from New England that uh, sac behavior correlated with uh, late survival. So patients with sac expansion uh, shown on the bottom uh, had worse uh, late survival compared to those uh, who did not have sac expansion. And that was independent of the presence uh, of endoleak. In a subsequent analysis using the entire VQI data set, uh, we were able to look at this and we found that SAC behavior was associated with new endoleaks that occurred over time, reinterventions, and also importantly again, long-term mortality. And what we found was that the best survival was in patients who had SAC regression. That's uh, in the yellow line. The worst survival was in patients who had SAC expansion but we also found that even with a stable sac diameter, the green line, they had a 20% higher mortality, so worse survival compared to patients with regression. And once again, this was independent of the presence or absence of endoleak uh, and also reintervention. So it led us to, to question, might there be a survival difference in late mortality with uh, active sac management using EVAS compared to EVAR? So as uh, everyone knows, the EVAS principle is different compared to EVAR, where we actually have the endo bag filled with polymer that obliterates that sac uh, area and eliminates the uh, potential or minimizes the potential for thrombus to form in there and also dramatically uh, minimizes the chance for a type 2 endoleak. So the story with EVAS so far, uh, we've already heard that there's been an, a steep uh, learning curve uh, initially uh, with good early clinical results in a cohorts of patients that were somewhat challenging with a very low rate of type 2 endoleak. However, at two years, failure modes became apparent with migration and sac expansion, which led to root cause analysis and then refinement of the IFU and then uh, looking at that subset of patients who met the updated IFU, they had excellent uh, clinical outcomes, but obviously reduced applicability. And a confirmatory prospective study is uh, underway right now. 
But a couple of things that came out of the early data from both the US IDE trial and the uh, global registry were uh, freedom from uh, cardiovascular mortality at two years of 99% in both groups. And the all-cause uh, mortality, or freedom from all-cause mortality, was also uh, higher than anticipated at 94% in the US group and 89% in the OUS. The uh, Mayo Clinic group uh, recently uh, showed us that survival after EVAR at three years was uh, very much dependent on the initial aneurysm <laughs> diameter. And when we looked at the EVAS group, uh, this is combining the US and the OUS group, it, it seemed to be maybe a little bit higher. Uh, but obviously, there's a lack of control here, and, and they may be totally different patient groups. Um, some of the potential reasons, uh, I think we've also heard about that with EVAS, there's a decrease in the post-implantation uh, syndrome. There's lower CRP levels, white blood cell count, uh, adverse events, in particular cardiac adverse events, and lower endoleak rates. And in the uh, Stenson uh, study, showed a dramatic decrease in CRP levels after implantation. And of note, the, the elevated CRP in the standard EVAR patients persisted out beyond one week. So to evaluate this further, we took the Patients from the US IDE, the 333 patients treated from 2014 to 2016, and we used as a control group the VQI patients treated during the same period, which was more than 15,000 uh, standard EVAR patients using all standard EVAR graphs included in the registry. We applied the same exclusion criteria to the VQI patients that was present, uh, that were present in the IDE study. Uh, patients on dialysis with a creatinine greater than two or rupture patients. And then we calculated propensity scores uh, and weighted for demographics uh, and comorbid conditions, especially uh, those related to the aneurysm and cardiovascular risk factors. With this, we applied inverse probability weighting to compare risk-adjusted long-term survival with Kaplan-Meier analysis. We, uh, characterized uh, uh, kidney disease with the CKD epi formula into no disease, uh, GFR 30 to 60 and less than 30. Uh, cardiac disease was described through the list of uh, characteristics there. And our primary outcome was simply overall survival uh, in the propensity-weighted cohort. And then as a secondary analysis, we looked at survival when stratified by aneurysm diameter into less than 5.5 or greater than 5.5 centimeters. And here is our, our primary outcome. Uh, we noted that after the propensity weighting, the EVAS patients experienced significantly higher three-year survival compared to EVAR at 93% versus 88%. This corresponded to a 41% lower risk of mortality, which was statistically significant. And of note, you see that there's some early separation of the curves, and then they continue to separate further apart over time. When we looked at the subgroup of patients with smaller aneurysms, we actually found no uh, difference in survival between the two groups, uh, the p-value of 0.25 and 94% versus 91% uh, three-year survival. However, when we analyzed the subgroup with the larger aneurysms, greater than 5.5 centimeters, we noted that the EVAR patients had twice the risk of mortality uh, over time with a hazard ratio of 2.0 and three-year survival rates of 92% with EVAS compared to 86% with EVAR. So in conclusion, we found that EVAS was associated with a higher long-term survival compared to traditional EVAR. And this association was strongest in those patients with aneurysms greater than 5.5 centimeters. We suspect that it's the biology of the uh, AAA wall uh, post-EVAR or EVAS that uh, is responsible for the difference, but clearly further study is needed, and we intend to compare late cardiovascular events as the next step in the analysis. Uh, but at the current time, we think that these uh, uh, results uh, are, are quite good and support continuation of this mode of therapy with active SAC uh, management. Uh, thank you very much, and I'm happy to entertain any questions.